buildings consume enormous amounts of energy. The steady rise in environmental costs and threatening climatic changes require measures capable of starting a new age of intelligence and technology, using knowledge and technology as effective weapons so that individuals can grow responsibly. If architecture too becomes a way to help nature, actions can be organized better and the dangers humanity is exposed to can be averted. Building sustainably means building high efficiency buildings that consume very little. The final output is that a person must nonetheless feel good inside a building, and this also means consuming very little. However, behind this effort, there's tremendous scientific research and simulation work. All those invisible things that do not transpire very much through architecture. The Italian Environment Ministry and the Chinese Science and Technology Ministry have launched the Sino-Italian Ecological and Energy Efficient Building, SIEEEB, within the framework of the Kyoto Protocol to cut CO2 emissions. It's a new generation high-tech, environment-friendly and energy efficient building hosting offices, laboratories, classrooms, an exhibition hall and a conference hall. The building is also home to the Sino-Italian Research Centre for the Environmental Protection and Energy Conservation. It's located inside the Tsinghao University campus in Beijing. The designer is the Italian architect Mario Cucinella. He was supported by a team from the Polytechnic of Milan. It's a building that aims at optimizing the use of artificial light because since electricity is generated using coal, the idea is to build a building with low energy demand. Light has a high demand. Therefore, a building along the east-west axis, facing south, means that the two wings of the C-shaped building always have a side facing the sun in the morning and afternoon. This is a building that optimizes the concept of maximizing the use of natural light. The building was conceived like a leaf that uses and transforms sunlight into energy. The series of terraces facing south are covered with more than a thousand square meters of solar panels supplying most of the building's electricity. The energy stored is also used for the experimental production of hydrogen to supply a combustion cell. Form and function are integrated to reduce the impact on the environment to the minimum. Thanks to its shape, to the outer shell's design, to the air conditioning system and above all to the smart control system, the CO2 emissions per square meter are two to three times lower than those of other Chinese buildings having the same purpose. A lot is said about the technologies when speaking of innovation, energy and power generation. But the issue of how to integrate any of these technologies into a building is still widely untouched today. That is to say, only now are we starting to see, probably in some extraordinary cases, projects where solar panels, ventilation and turbines are becoming an integral part of the form. The building makes the most of natural light, hence reducing its energy demand. An automatic system monitors whether there are people in the rooms, and depending on the actual needs, it manages the opening and closing of the semi-reflecting slats on the facades and skylights. Artificial light too is modulated depending on the natural light conditions and the specific needs of the moment. 
The central control can automatically switch off the lights in any empty rooms. The lighting system consists of fluorescent fixtures with dimmers and control systems to integrate natural and artificial light and avoid wasting energy. Interpreting light by night is an interesting issue because the night offers a great scenic opportunity which does not consist in blasting light all around. At night the building is rather discreet. It's closed around itself, yet transparent to the eyes of the observer, consistently with the entire project to cut consumption. Dimmerable light air fixtures and the comfort system are designed to ensure maximum lighting comfort in the functional lighting of offices, eliminating glare and ensuring a proper distribution of light intensity for work through optics with controlled luminance and compliance with UGR values. In the exhibition and entrance hall areas, Cucinella chose woody discharge fixtures mounted on tracks. The 35 watt lamps have a color temperature of 3000 K and have been widely tested and used also in continuous or articulated operating conditions. In the auditorium area, the functional lighting uses woody fixtures with a recessed base. Floodlight optics is used over seats and spotlights to light steps. Accent optics is mounted instead in the speaker's area. When speaking of sustainability, we're speaking of something real. However, the problem lies in transforming the issue of sustainability into environmental high technology, because otherwise it would be a terrible mistake. It lies in designing buildings that can have their own life up to a certain point, and then I step in with technology. The energy and environmental revolution are changing architecture. In a few decades, they will even change the urban landscape. Design using sustainable energy becomes real by recovering ancient good building practices, while applying them within the framework of a technological evolution whose key words are automation, light and behaviours. This advanced design is possible only by integrating reliable management systems and products with great design and functional properties. The SIEEB building is a bright example of technological integration and a new environmental awareness.